this is our little video of us leaving Hurlston Reservoir um, and on our way to Chester. New waters, lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, should we want to turn down the Middlewich branch, we'd now do a sharp right here, but we're carrying straight on, heading towards Chester. Yeah, just listening for a three second blast, just in case somebody was coming out of that junction, but nothing. Yeah, so on our way um, to Chester, we stopped off at, at Calverley yeah. um, for some water. Um, and met up with Jan and Tony, they were, they were actually getting water as well um, from Narrowboat Sanguine, um, friends of ours that we've been sort of passing. Yeah, for the last few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's been lovely. Um, so we, we saw them, they actually, st we were talking to them about the cupboards getting low on food. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and Jan said to me, she said, oh, she said there's an Audi up there around the corner or something, I can't remember, but I misinterpreted what she said. Yeah, four, four hours cruising later, still no still no Aldis. Yeah. So um, I, think, I think they'd been all the way from there to Ellesmere. Yeah. And somewhere along the way there was an Aldis, which yeah. we, do, we do find later in the video, yeah. but um, not, not for another couple of nights. So uh, had to go without essentials. Plenty of food though. Mm. I've got a dirty t-shirt on. Oh, hang on, let's, let's just been informed that Jan's got a dirty t-shirt on. Yeah. What was the little finger doing? I don't, I don't know, I apologise for that, Jan. Yeah, so we're at Calverley um, Services, now berthed up with Jan and Tony on Narrowboat Sanguine. Um, I think they've been overstaying here, I think they've been here two or three weeks on the water yeah. point, but uh, we've come along and they're uh, going to move off and we've been informed that that away there's an Aldi's, so restock and the first lock we got to um, was a staircase lock and yeah. wide locks um, we hadn't really checked the guidebook we've been traveling in narrow locks for months and uh, come up to the wide lock uh, had a look round, nobody to share it so we had to go down through herself but uneventful got yeah. through it yeah, yeah. Bunbury staircase locks and that's our first double locks um, since January when we come up the GU on the Hatton flight. Yeah so there's the pound we're in and with it being a staircase that pound empties directly into the next lock which we have to ensure is empty. If not when we emptied this lock that would cause that one to overflow. So Debbie's now going to empty that lock and then when we drain this lock down into the next lock, that will then fill that for us to go in. A very, very leaky lock. And as you can see, as we drain that lock down, our boat will drop down, water level in this one will fill up, and we'll come in here. As Debbie lowers the, opens the paddle, we're lowering down and I'm just keeping the boat steady just with a line, just wrapped around that bollard. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy after nearly six months on single locks, these seem absolutely cavernous. Uh, but we cut our teeth on the Grand Union in the double locks. Uh, Just before Beeston Stonelock. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, just overnight because it was very near the lock landing. Yeah, there was a, uh, I was actually going to say, like you can see here, but you can't see here. And if I did say <laughs> here, it would give away where, where, we, where we actually are. But there was a picnic bench there and we moored li literally on the last part of the mooring before we got to the lock landing, which we found is not the ideal place to um, moor because yeah. you, you have lots of boats coming in onto the lock landing. Yeah either going in down through the lock or coming back up yeah. so uh, so we just stayed the one night didn't stayed we? the one night got up nice and early um got the engine warmed up on the boat deb went down to the lock which was only 100 yards from where we were got all the locks set opened one gate and i've just loosened <laughs> me ropes ready and man comes zooming past waved um, at me and then straight into the lock then he realized it uh, didn't matter because we would have shared the lock anyway yeah. and uh, it was a lovely couple on a hire boat but yeah. he was he was sort of mortified that he'd um, sort of jumped in front of us but I'd, I'd have waved him on anyway yeah. uh, it was just just funny to see the expression on his face <laughs> now the lock behind me that we're about to go into is a little bit different and uh, I'll explain why yeah so this is Beeston iron lock and due to its uh, the distortions is advised to go in um, one at a time rather than doubling up. Yeah, so the higher boat that we uh, just locked down with with the Beeston um, stone lock, and we'll let them go first because there is a higher centre just past the bridge and they've got to get the boat back. Yeah, so as you can see, the whole lock is made with big cast iron sections. Even the base of the lock is cast iron and the curving entrance and exit walls are all cast iron as well. Yeah, this um, lock, when the canal was originally built, was built with stone, the same as the uh, first lock, but they was having problems with um, shifting sand underneath the lock and the weight and the water leaking was making it worse and they had lots of collapse collapses so Telford come up with his ingenious idea of cast iron sections and as I said the sections are sides and bottoms um, they overlap all into lock and this has been here since 1928 the locking mechanism is standard lock mechanism there's the wonderful Debbie is demonstrating I feel like Paul Daniels he had a Debbie Didn't you fancy a pint at the Shady Oak Deborah? No, no, I want to get moored, sit down, read a book and have my own gin and tonic. Looks like I'll be speaking to myself tonight. Once Debbie gets engrossed in a book, that's you don't see much of it. Well, one of us has to read. And what book are you reading? Kim, no, Angela Marson's Kim Stone. Um, she's a detective. And they're brilliant. I've read every single yeah, one of them, about you, 13 of them. You heard it here first.
yeah, so we left there and um, cruised for a few more hours. I think it was just outside Waverton um, we decided to moor. Not a very good mooring, um, but but okay, you know, just, in, just for in, in the sense, it wasn't a picturesque mooring. No. Very narrow no. towpath with a steep stinging nettle bank and then hedges, so yeah. you couldn't really see anything. No. But, um, Mark got out there with his shears and cut a space for me. Cut to... a big space in the stinging nettles so we could sit there with the chairs, but there was just too many things that bit. Yeah. Yeah, so... And a lot, a lot of footfall. There was a lot yeah, of tra yes, foot traffic yeah, as well. Yeah, I think that was like on one of the, the local walking circular routes for dog walkers. Sorry about that, plane. <laughs> <laughs> and then we moved two whole miles to Tarbin Lock, yeah. and this was the lock where um, Aldi's was in sight. So yes. we, yeah, restock. Morning. We we're off to Deborah. We're off to. Or more importantly, where are we? Well, we are at the top of Tarvin Lock, which means nothing. No. Just outside Chester. Yeah, just outside Chester. We've got three locks to do, and then a staircase of two. Um, to get into Chester Basin, which or is called Tower Wharf. Tower Wharf. I think it yeah. is. Probably isn't, but yeah. I, I'm calling it Tower. Well, Wharf. we're going to what? What three words it for? Yeah, you? and a lot of um, requests to put what three words um, locations. I know some of yeah. the other more famous vloggers, Colin and Sean, uh, do it. So we're not copying you guys. Uh, we have been requested to do this. And I normally forget, so hopefully when we get to somewhere of interest, <laughs> I will put what three words. They might not be the right three words. Yeah, as Morecambe and Wise said, uh, all the right notes, just not in the right order. And just as we've come along, point your finger, here we've got a game of cricket going on. And the good thing is, if you're at Tarvin Lock, just past Tarvin Lock is, I don't know whether you can just make the sign out an Aldi's. The kind chap helping Debbie is a serial vlog helper. He's appeared on uh, many of the other people's channels. Always here to just help out narrowboats coming down the locks. So Ian has just helped us through chemistry lock and he's now going to go down to the next lock and help us through there again. And apparently this is how Ian spends his uh, leisure time, just helping other boaters. So uh, big thumbs up to you, Ian. Yeah, and as we come out of chemistry lock, I believe just behind me um, was the site of the old lead works. But I shall, uh, I shall look that up because I'll probably be wrong. So a massive thank you to Ian for his help on these locks today. 15 years he's been doing this.
So I've explained before with the um, staircase locks, it's important to read any instructions that are there. I haven't found any yet, but obviously if you're going down a staircase and there's this, there's, there's three chambers, the top chamber needs to be full and the bottom two are empty. I can't help it, right? Okay, so so we left um, Audis after doing an absolutely massive shop. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a massive shop. Yeah, one of those really hot days where you bought so much and you're trailing it back to the boat and you're like two oh. big trolley, granny trolley. And, yeah, and, and a couple of bags. Yeah, I, think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we uh, over shopped. Yeah, <laughs> but, hey yeah, but um, it, we got down to the Chester Basin. As, you, as you've just seen, and um, well, we talk more about Chester Basin yeah, in next week's video. Yeah, lovely place. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's about it. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, all apart from a big, big thank you to uh, this week's supporters of the channel. Yes. Um, and I did memorise them, but it's all gone, <laughs> so I will look at my notes. Lomax Lawson. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Keith Teasdale. A double thank you, and yes. uh, Keith will know uh, why we're thanking him doubly. Greg Ward. And Stephen Brody. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you, you all so, so much, much for supporting, supporting the, the channel. channel. Yeah, and yeah. all existing uh, patron supporters. Thank you very, very much. Yes. Uh, so if you've enjoyed the video, press the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, press the subscribe button. If you want future notifications of any other videos we upload, the bell icon. And most importantly of all, comments. Yeah, keep the comments Love your coming. comments. Is that it? Yeah, I think okay. that's it. Bye. Bye.